Hi all, uh, thank you for joining my channel today. I wanted to talk about one of the flat earth models and apply some science to it. So I'm going to take the commonly held flat earth model where the earth is a flat disk and the sun hovers over it in circles. And I will develop this model and see where it is consistent with observations and actually see how far we can take it. Now please note that I do not believe in the flat earth model as I'm an actual scientist, but I thought I'd take a more constructive approach in the flat earth uh, debate. We are going to use the scientific method based on observations to build a model. We will then make some predictions based on the model and see if it holds up. So we will start with the position of the sun as seen from two locations on the same line of longitude and at the same time. And we will use this information to find, uh, well, to calculate the position of the sun in three-dimensional space. We have the position of the sun at Null Island, which is the point where the equator intersects the line of zero longitude, and the South Pole. Now these positions are chosen because it makes the maths a bit more simple. However, we could use different positions, uh, but the maths will become a little bit more complicated and it will still hold up. Now, uh, the sources of the information are shown on screen, but you can perform your own measurements provided that they are taken on the same line of longitude and you can plug them in the equations that will be shown in this video. So here's a brief outline of the maths that we will use. It is simple GCSE level or 10th grade trigonometry, and I won't dwell on this, but I'll put all these uh, relationships up the top right here for future reference. Now, according to the flat earth model, we have a disk with the sun hovering above it. Now, we can draw a line from the center of the disk to one edge, and we call this the line of longitude. Now, I've chosen here uh, the line of zero longitude to be in line with the location for our uh, observations. Now we just take the bit that we're interested in and we can connect the location of our observations with the center of the sun with a line. Now these lines are at an angle to the surface of the earth and for the point at the equator uh, we have an angle of 66.57 degrees and from the south pole we have an angle of 23.67 degrees. Now these two points are separated by some distance d uh, which is 10 to the 7 meters. Now this is a value taken from Google Earth which I also believe is a trusted source within the flat earth community now we can put these parameters aside just for tidiness now we have a triangle that we can split up into two right angled triangles by drawing a line from the center of the sun down to the surface of the earth and this line meets the surface of the earth at 90 degree angles now this line has some length h and that rep represents the uh, distance between the earth's surface and the sun now we have two right angled triangles and we can find the hypotenuse R1 and R2 for each triangle. Next we want to find out the distance between our two points and a point where the sun is directly overhead. We'll call these values D1 and D2. Now we'll put the diagram to the sides so we have some space to work. So the first relationship that we want to see is that D1 plus D2 is equal to D. Now D1 is equal to R1 cosine theta 1 and D2 is equal to R2 cosine theta 2. So we have an expression for d in terms of r1, r2, and theta1 and theta2. However, there are quite a few unknowns in this expression. Uh, so we want to reduce that a little bit. So we know that h is equal to r1 sine of theta1 and r2 sine of theta2. So we can actually stick that into an expression uh, where we equate r1 sine of theta1 to r2 sine of theta2. And we can rearrange that in terms of R1 and R2. Now we can substitute our expression for R1 and R2 into the equation for D, just to get rid of one of the R's in each case. And this allows us to then actually solve for R1 and R2. Now I'll take all the steps on the screen. I'm not going to talk through them because it's actually quite tedious, but it's just there to show you that I'm not bamboozling you or anything, okay? Okay, so there we have expressions for R1 and R2, and we can actually evaluate them. So we can find the distances. R1 is roughly 4,000 kilometers, and R2 is roughly uh, 9,200 kilometers. Now we can stick those values to the side, uh, just for tidiness, so we can carry on uh, with our model. So we, now we have information about R1, we can actually find our distance D1, and we can do the same for D2. And we can just quickly check that the two add up to 10 to the 7 meters, which they do. Next, we can calculate the value for h with r1 sine of theta 1. And we can repeat that for r2 sine of theta 2, just as a sanity check. And they are consistent. 
Now we'll put the values we just found to the side again, uh, just for tidiness. We're now in a position to make our first prediction, and what we're going to do is pick an arbitrary point between Null Island and the South Pole. Uh, now I've chosen a point at minus 45 degrees, it makes the whole job a lot easier. Now this point is separated from the point where the vertical line intersects the uh, surface of the Earth, and its distance is d3. Now we can make a prediction about the elevation angle of the Sun, which we'll call theta3. So what we do is uh, first calculate d3. Um, we can find that using this expression. Now from our model, we would expect the Sun uh, to be at uh, the inverse tan of h over d3, which is equal to 47.26 degrees. Now if we compare that to values given to us by suncalc.net, which I believe is also a trusted resource within the Flat Earth community, again, if you have the money, you could fly out there and actually perform this measurement yourself. Uh, this gives us an angle of 68.43 degrees. Now, this tells us already that this model is not consistent. Now there are two ways this could be. Either the mathematics is wrong, or the actual assumption that the Earth is a flat disk with the Sun hovering above it is incorrect. Now, I know the maths is not wrong. So this model is inconsistent. However, let's ignore that inconsistency and move on. What I want to do is actually calculate the size of the Sun. So the angular diameter of the Sun as seen from Earth is about 0.5 degrees. The radius is then 0.25 degrees. Now we'll call this angle theta s. Now you can check this yourself, but be careful and don't look into the sun. We can now calculate the radius of the sun, rs, using trigonometry. So what I've done here is draw the left-hand triangle. We've got uh, d1, h, r1, and theta1. And we can just rotate this because it's only really r1 that we're interested in. Now we draw another line, uh, which is the hypotenuse going from our point to the edge of the sun. And uh, that has some angle theta s, which is 0 0.25 degrees. Now we can say that uh, rs actually here is equal to r1 sine of theta s. Um, now this is a slight bit of trickery. Uh, this is called the small angle approximation. Um, just look it up and you'll see that this is a valid thing to do. Now here we actually calculate that the radius of the Sun as measured from position 1 is 17 and a half kilometers. But when we repeat this using the observation from the South Pole, we get a different value. We calculate that the radius of the Sun is actually 40 kilometers. This is more than a factor of two difference. So this model is still not consistent. So let's have a look at a different model, or the heliocentric model. Here we have a cross section of the Earth, okay, and this is tilted by some angle, and I've drawn in the equator and the rotation axis, and I've indicated Null Island and the South Pole in there. Now the Sun is far away off the right of the screen. So Firstly, we look at no island. Okay, we can draw a tangent line from the surface where we are standing. And we see that the elevation angle is 66.57 degrees. Now we can repeat the same thing for the South Pole. And we see that the elevation angle is uh, 23.67 degrees. So we have those two values. Uh, and you'll notice, actually, that uh, the lines connecting the points in the Sun are roughly parallel. Let's just zoom in on that a little bit. And now we can actually calculate the size of the Sun from these two positions. And we make the assumption here that the Sun is 150 billion meters away. Uh, now there's a slight difference in the distance, and just to be really tedious, I'm going to account for this. So there's a difference in distance of, uh, well, 3,309 kilometers. So we can just plug those values in as the distance between those two points and the sun. And we find that if we measure the size of the sun from uh, Null Island, we see that the uh, radius of the sun is uh, 6.54497 times 10 to the 8 meters. 
And when we repeat that from the South Pole, we find that the radius of the Sun is 6.54511 times 10 to the 8th meters. Now, these two values agree with each other within 0.002%. This is most likely due to a rounding error. So in conclusion, the Flat Earth model delivers inconsistent measurements for the position and the size of the Sun. And these measurements disagree by a factor greater than two. However, the heliocentric model is consistent with observations. And the measurements are consistent within a factor of 0.00002. And this is a very crude version of the heliocentric model. And it is still 100,000 times more reliable than the flat Earth model. Now, I hope I've clearly demonstrated one of the major flaws in the flat Earth model. You can get in contact with me by just commenting on this video. I will try and respond to all respectful comments, which weren't one, or particularly disrespectful ones, because I do enjoy a balmy at times. Now let me know if there are any other things within the flat Earth kind of model uh, that you'd like me to look into, and I'll consider it. So with that, thank you for watching.